cover story for May is an interview with Minda Dutton, writer, advocate, and the first female wheelchair athlete Ironman triathlon finisher. Also included in this annual mobility themed issue are topics ranging from equine therapy to public transportation. Sign up to receive this and every issue for free at epmagazine.com. Oscar Mike Radio is a proud podcast partner of Reats Across America Radio. Heard every Thursday at 11 a.m. and Sunday at 8 a.m. Eastern. They're also big supporters of the nonprofit I Got Your Six, Two Lives at Once. And with every wreath you sponsor through Oscar Mike Radio, $5 goes back to this great organization dedicated to making a difference in the lives of veterans, law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders battling PTSD. Two Lives at Once pairs these brave men and women together with dogs rescued from kill shelters. In this way, two lives are saved at the same time by saving each other. Donate now. Go to wreathsacrossamerica.org slash Oscar Mike Radio to help. That's wreathsacrossamerica.org slash Oscar Mike Radio. Suicide is preventable, and each of us has a role to play in suicide prevention. Suicide is complex. There is no single cause, and it's not always a mental health issue. It could be loss of a job or home, financial or relationship issues, pain, or leaving the military. Suicide does not discriminate. It affects all ages, races, and genders, veterans or not. If you know a veteran who is struggling, connect with them. Let them know help is available. There is quick and easy access to services in times of crisis. Dial 988, then press 1. Talking about it is okay. Don't keep it inside. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov reach. Hello and welcome again to Oscar Mike Radio. My name is Travis, Marine Corps veteran and your host. Oscar Mike Radio is part of the Hoobazoo Network. You can find out more on hoobazoo.com. I want to thank my sponsors, Joyce Asak of Asak Real Estate, Army National Guard veteran, Mark Holmes of Reapers Detailing and Power Watching, and my supporters, Quezon Shaving Company, Exceptional Parent Magazine, and Black Cat Designs. It's always a great time here on Oscar Mike Radio. I learned so much, and this next guest uh, focuses on veterans' advocacy in a very unique place. I've talked to several people and you know, volunteered at nonprofits that work in and for homeless veterans. But this organization and my next guest do it in a very different way. So without any further delay, I want to welcome Jeremiah Williams, Army veteran of Warriors First Incorporated to Oscar Mike Radio. Jeremiah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate this opportunity to get our name out there. This is all great, man. I mean, I got reached out to by your organization and said, hey, check us out. And I started looking at it and I'm like, okay, I've talked to homeless, you know, Agassi before. It's all good. It's a problem. Let's face it. But right off the bat, your website and, you know, from what I was able to gather, you all do it in a very different way. So before we get into that, and that's all good and it's all good stuff, though, let's figure out who Jeremiah is. Kind of give us a Cliff Notes version of your background and, you know, your Army service and then your transition out of the service, please. I got you. I um, appreciate that. 
Well, about me, uh, high school athlete, college athlete, graduated from Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia, one of the biggest Baptist schools, Christian Baptist schools on the East Coast. Graduated in 2012 with a bachelor's in sport management. Um, bounced around from job to job, and then I decided one day, you know, it was kind of weighing on me to actually, because how I got started in the military was that uh, we had a command sergeant major that would work on a farm. I grew up on an 80-acre farm here in the rural area of Buckingham County, Virginia. And uh, he was a, he asked asked me basically saying, hey, would you ever consider joining the military, joining the National Guard? And I was like, okay, you know, I thought about it. I talked to his brother. His brother was a recruiter. He was a really good guy. Kind of put it on the back burner. Thought it was, you know, not going to be for me. And then later on, I was like, man, I really need to do something. I really wanted to serve my country as well because I love the history. You know, anybody that knows anything about the National Guard, uh, we're actually the oldest military branch. 1636 is actually, you know, for the National Guard. Uh, Minutemen, Patriot, Mel Gibson, watch the movie, great movie. Um, if it wasn't for them, you know, we wouldn't have this country that we have today. And so that was my history. That's what I really wanted to do. And so in Fe November 1st, 2013, I raised my right hand to serve my country, my state, and went to basic training in February 2014. <laughs> And end up getting injured, but I'll go into that in a little bit in a minute. But I still was able to finish and my basic training in AIT at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Fort Lawson Woods, combat engineer. I love to blow stuff up. I was gonna say blow <laughs> stuff up. Good thing, right? Can't say the word <laughs> as we like to, but we got our own drinking song too. Um, but uh I enjoyed it. I still talk to my drill sergeants to this day. They were great leaders and uh but that's who that's how I got started with my military background and how I got started into it. Um, I want to learn want to talk want to lead into how we got started into sure. um, uh, with our warriors first. So with that, going back track into how I got injured, I got injured at basic training and it put a I was still able to complete it. you know I needed to recover. Doctor almost said I almost lost you know part of my foot because of it. And, uh, but I still pushed through, you know, even the head drill sergeant at the, um, base at Fort Leonard Wood, he basically told my stepdad, he's like, man, I don't even know how he finished because <laughs> it, it was that bad. It was, it got really infected, but I kept on pushing, got back, told uh, my unit that I needed surgery. I needed surgery for this injury. They went through it and went through the whole process. Didn't really have a great unit. Uh, but you know, we all have those. Yeah. Kind of, I would say, good moments and bad moments in the military. Me, I got mine very early and uh, didn't have a strong connection. I wasn't part of that good old boy system. Never was in high school either. I was always considered myself as a jock geek. <laughs> I liked, um, I was a jock, but I enjoyed anime, video games, and hanging out with the guys that basically would talk about all that stuff and I never was cocky or anything. I may be six foot nine and be a big guy and offensive lineman, defensive lineman, but it's just, I was never that way. I was humble and I still am to this day. I'll help anyone that needs help and offered. I was raised right by my mother. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. Absolutely. And so it's just that Southern hospitality and uh, nothing like it, but, man. There's nothing like it. No, there's really not. And it's just some people, well, that's how I got my beautiful wife and she's from Jersey. I got, I got her and she's down here with me. And so. No, no, wait a minute, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I have a lot of experience with Jersey and Jersey women. We'll get into that because <laughs> that's like oil and water, my man. I mean. Hey, she loves me. And that's why she's down here. She I guess loved me so. <laughs> wow. Okay, but all right. She's a strong Breaking Jersey to... woman. I love her yes. to death. And she's, and she's basically, and I, when we get into the nitty and gritty about this organization, she is the glue that's held it together. Oh, that's and, fantastic. And fantastic. So, well done. Um, but uh, anyway, so I got finally um, to, went to my unit. And I, during that time of waiting for it to get approved, because you know how the military is, they say hurry up and wait. And so it took them a while. It took them a year, actually, for it to get approved. And so uh, I had a great job working at Fort Pickett. It's now Fort something at um, Blackstone, Virginia. They changed the name because uh, of all that stuff going on nowadays. But um, 
I will always call it Fort Pickett because okay. it was just the way I was for me. And so uh had a great job working there at Mates. I was a painter and the chief warrant officer really didn't like me, but his bosses did. And so that's how I got the job working there for a good while. And I was trying to, you know, transition out anyway, because I knew about my contract. Well, told him when I when it finally got approved, said, Hey, I got my um, surgery approved that I need for the military. He's like, well, you know, you're on your probationary period. I said, yes, sir. I understand, but I need this surgery. And the only way the national guard will pay you for your injury or anything, basically if, for a military injury or surgery or out of work is that you have a full-time job. And so that's what I told him. I went through the whole process, did everything I was supposed to do. I was still green, still very new to, you know, knowing everything. And so I uh, finally got my surgery done, starting to get my paycheck my, from the National Guard. And, you know, hey, I'm in my mid-20s. I'm thinking, hey, I'm adulting. So I'm going to finally move out of my parents' house, get an apartment. So that way, because I'm still paying on my car, I'm doing everything I need to do right that I was taught that I was supposed to be doing right. And then all of a sudden, because uh, I'm still having complications from the surgery, I get a phone call on October 30th. From not one, but two majors. I still remember their names, but I'm not going to say there are any names on here. So uh, so they give me a call and say, hey, Special Williams, just want to let you know, as of October 3rd, you are no longer employed at Fort Pickett. I said, I'm just hearing about this now. And they said, well, sorry, we couldn't get in touch with you. I said, well, you got in touch with me now. And I said, you know, how is this legal? I'm out of work due to a military injury. And they said, well, you weren't able to complete your probationary period. I said, but again, how is this legal? I'm out of work due to a military injury that the military caused. And I'm, I know it's my probationary period, but it shouldn't affect me. And everybody told me it shouldn't affect me. They said, well, your chief already submitted the paperwork for your termination. And you're, you're already terminated. This is just a courtesy call. I said, so what am I supposed to do? Because I was, I'm being very short with this because I was cussing and everything. They were like, remember your military bearing? I said, screw that. That's my life, basically. And they, uh, they said, if you need any assistance, call your unit. I said, all right. So my luck, like I said, I had the worst unit in the state of Virginia. Not saying any unit. But uh, all they did was basically give me uh, information to an organization. I'm sure you've talked about it before. It's called Military One Source. Military One Source is an organization. I try to explain this really quickly. Think of it as a central hub to yep. where organizations can actually go connect with them. And so that way, if a soldier like me, myself or any other person calls them, they can actually answer question, answer the questions and send them in the right direction. And what uh, organization can actually match their needs or what they need. So I called them, told them my situation. They basically said, Okay, uh, we're going to ask you three questions, and you answer them, and we'll try to figure out the best organization for you. I said, okay. I said, are you a veteran? I said, well, I raised my right hand to serve my country and my state. I completed basic training in AIT, and this is when I was two years in. And I said, yeah, I believe I am a veteran. You know, everybody told my recruiter and everybody told me that, hey, you put in the work, you've done, you've done your training for the team. I mean, it's what we push ourselves to do and to be deployable. We, we're ready ourselves to be ready, always ready, always there. That's our motto for the national guard. And so they said, sorry, sir, that don't count. Completing basic training don't count. Base training AIT. I said, okay. They said, have you accumulated 180 days of active duty service? I said, well, I've been in national guard for close to two years now. And uh, I've been told that my drill dates count as active duty days. So, yeah, I believe I have accumulated 180 days. They said, sorry, sir, those are state orders, not federal orders, so those orders don't count. Oh. I said, okay. And the final question, they, they knew the answer to, but they asked it anyway. They said, do you have any prior service that equals six years or more? I said, no, I've only been in National Guard for two years, and this is where I plan on doing my career. They said, well, sorry, sir, you don't meet the classification of what we qualify, what we classify, don't meet the qualifications of what we classify as a veteran and i said excuse me so you're telling me that every every time we go to drill 
And every time that we have a meeting that they're saying and our leadership is telling us to call you if we need any assistance, you're telling me I can't get any assistance right now when I, I need help, that I just lost my job, I'm about to lose my apartment, that I'm not because and just because I'm not on orders or I'm not on active duty, that I can't get any assistance for my military injury that basically put me out of work right now? They said, well, yes, sir, oh, we're sorry. I said, so basically what you're telling me is that my my service that I'm doing right now is meaningless. They said, no, sir, it's not meaningless. I said, but that's basically what you're telling me, that I'm wasting my time in the military right now for my country and my state, that I can't get any assistance from any organization just because they don't classify me as a veteran. But in my heart, as me doing my training, I'm a veteran. They said, well, sir, you know, that's just it's policy. I said, policy? I said, you want to know something? It's pro The way you're making me feel, the way you're talking to me, I might as well just become another statistic and put, um, put a bullet in my head because this is how every every soldier feels, what you're saying to me. They said, no, 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 sir. If you think about harming yourself or others, we definitely can help you with that. I said, oh, so you want to stop me from killing myself, but you don't want to help me with the issues that I'm telling you I need help with. They said, sir, again, it's just policy. I said, well, your policy effing sucks. And I hung up the phone. And for a good month, I was, and this is, this is my testimony. I tell everybody this. Sure. So it's not, this isn't, this isn't new, but it's just, it still hits me hard because uh, I still suffer from this. This put a heavy toll on me and my sure. mental health. Of course it did. Of course and, it did. And, and this, I don't, I don't want other soldiers to go through this. And because I felt alone, I put it into a de the desperate spot and, I went to a lot of depression, alcoholism for, you know, really fast and in a good short amount of time. And I was playing video games, just doing everything I could to keep my mind off stupid stuff. Um, I made my appointments so I can um, heal. And I was trying to do anything I could to muster up some money and everything. But I was lucky enough, I'm smart enough. My mom told me to uh, taught me to save at least one month's paycheck. And that's what I did. So I at least I knew I had a month to go, and, but it's just I did a lot of drinking. Grey Goose was my best friend, and I, was, <laughs> and, uh, I, didn't, have, I didn't have enough money to get Jack, but because uh, um, I just loved Grey Goose, and uh, finally one day I just I just gave up. I really did. I really just said F it. I went to my bedroom and I was just gonna just end it all. I was like, who was who would care about me, really? Like, I have no wife at the time. I had nobody. I was in a four wall box, felt alone, going in a dark spiral just constantly, and I just didn't know what to do. And I just, to this day, I still remember the gun gunmetal, the taste of gunmetal in my mouth, wow. because it. And uh, God stepped in. I'm dead serious. God stepped in because my best friend from college, uh, from Liberty, uh, he saved my life. He knocked on the door, just do a wellness check, just to see how I was doing. And he just drove up to see me and see how we were doing. And to this day, he, you know, his mom was actually in the military. His mom was a ma major in the Pentagon. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. But um, but he never served. But I love him like a brother. And so he will always be my brother. He saved my life. And uh, he, to this day, we, we hang out. And it's like we picked up from where we just left off. And that's what, why I started, my wife and I started this. We started this, um, I've had a lot of ups and downs in the military. I actually, um, I think a year later, my sergeant that actually, um, he did a couple tours. He was active duty. He was a um, horizontal engineer. He actually took a shotgun to his chest in his truck. And we don't know why. We don't know what he, what he was thinking. He, was, he had a great day with some buddies, some buddies from his unit. From the from the old unit, my old unit, and uh, he told him just, hey, go upstairs. Uh, that's what I was told. Um, that he said, hey, go up to the hotel, into the room. I'll meet y'all up there next morning. State police knock on the door. Said, do you know such and such? They said, yeah. Is he all right? I said, sorry to tell you, he killed himself in his truck. And so, don't know why. Uh, I'm not, you know, putting anything out there. I don't want to do that. But it's just mental health is real. Mental health is really struggling in a lot of a lot of soldiers, you know, national, um, you know, National Guard, reservists, active duty. It's real. You know, people don't realize that people think, oh, yeah, you can get PTSD, just PTSD from, 
you know, being a soldier overseas, but, you know, you can get PTSD anywhere, even here, you know, even from being in your units. And it's just, it's mental health is struggling because a lot of these guys, that's all they struggle. That's all they live off of sometimes is their drill check. And then when you're basically reaching out to these services that are supposed to be helping you and all they're doing is national guard service or reservist service. And they're not even counting it in your veterans as it's from the VA or anything, you can't get any assistance. So that's why we're trying to, that's, that's, that's one thing, Jeremiah, that, you know, I, I served active duty and it wasn't until I actually, you know, I'll, I'll be straight with you. We didn't get to hang out with that many reservists or national guard where, where I was and what I did. Right. And, uh, you know, to be candid with you, we really didn't like reservists yeah. uh, that they got treated with kid gloves in our view. Uh, but yeah. we never had many national guard people. And it wasn't until I started, you know, meeting some national guard people that you just assume that because we're all in the, the military, we all get treated the same. It We're like National Guard people don't get the same seat at the table that a reservist or active duty does at all. No. And, and, and but, but the, the problem I have is, okay, you're not given the same seat at the table, but you'll ask them to go to Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, Japan for, yep a month, six months, whatever, like it's no big deal. And, and yeah. something's got to change there. I mean, because, you know, I've heard about this happening where a problem happens, you know, wife has a problem back at home, guy has an injury, and it's like a real gray area. And it just seems like for some units, we'll just kick them out. And then it's not our problem anymore. So it, it's, I'm glad you're bringing light to this. You, your, fr- your friend comes in and, and, you know, with, with no exaggeration saves your life. What happened after that, that started you to say, you know what, I can, I can do this again. I can, I, I'm going to stay in the game. Well, basically it just gave me more reason to keep going. Yeah. I, I, uh, I still, like I said, I still struggle, struggle with depression. And sometimes I, you know, have to I have relapses. You know, uh, even recently this week I did because uh, I just got laid off from my job. Oh, no. But I found a new job and I I'm about to start back up. But it's just it it help it, it hurts. But going into that, uh, what kept me going, I guess, is having you know being lucky enough to have a good family to le- take me let me go back home. I was too prideful. I didn't want to reach out to my family. I didn't want to reach out to anyone because I didn't want to seem like a failure. And so. Luckily, I was um, short in my time. I my best friend helped me find a job too, and helped me uh, stay in his old apartment. He was getting married, and so he was moving in with his wife. And so it it was a bit. I've been up and down. I would say you know it's it's been no picnic. <laughs> it has really not been no picnic for me. But I, me and my wife did long distance for two years. Um, Jersey girl, loving a central, uh, central Virginia boy, Southern boy from Virginia. And uh, so, yeah, it's just, uh, it was an up and down struggle. And, uh, but in the end, I, we, uh, we started this when, during COVID actually, because uh, okay. I was working, I was working uh, at uh, some prisons, uh, Department of Corrections uh, for the state of Virginia as a casework counselor. And then when COVID hit, I was like, man, I need to get out of here. <laughs> and then so an inmate is actually the one that told me, said, hey, you thought about getting your CDL. So I was like, man, let me let me try and do it. So I ended up doing that and it gave me a little more freedom, gave me a better paycheck. And when I was starting to do that, I just, it was, I felt like, hey, you know, even though I am, you know, caught up, I mean, I'm still struggling with some bills, but it's just, Maybe this is a good time for us to try and start this nonprofit. And so I found I did all the research beforehand anyway to find the right company, everything to help us get started. And they would they did every single thing. They filed our tax stuff, everything. So we just had to come up with a mission and create our board. Our board actually consists of uh, one, um, two other military personnel. Uh, one is from the South Carolina National Guard. He was in basic training with me, actually in my platoon. And then another one, he was in second platoon, 
Um, he was in another platoon, but he's one of my best friends as well. He's uh, we didn't see we didn't see each other for like seven years, and then he but we always stayed in contact. He came to my wedding, flew over, and it was just like man, we just picked up and hugged each other. We missed each other. Uh, he was active duty. He's still active duty. He's serving in Germany right now, but he still makes our meetings every every week. And uh, he's on the board. And then my wife as well. And one of her colleagues, uh, one of her friends from work. And, you know, so she's a good friend now. Well, she's always been a good friend, but I'm just, you know what I'm saying. And so, uh, but like I said, to answer your question, go in more depth. It's just, it's been a real struggle up and down. Uh, but it's just that motivation of actually helping people. Like I told you in the very beginning. I'll Answer me this. Okay. Warriors First is, again, more focused on rural advocacy, you know, not major cities, but like small. And I grew up in Smithville, Illinois, as a town of 250 people when I was there. So like, like there's there's churches that have more people in Sunday school than than what I grew up in. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did you focus on like rural advocacy versus trying to go to a big city because a lot of places are like hey we're going to focus on big metropolitan areas yeah yeah so what we wanted to do was with that is that so in my time of understanding and le learning a lot of things i wanted to expand upon that um i wanted to help these guys and these soldiers that are struggling in these rural areas because I, i'm in the rural area and people forget about them. People forget that there, there are soldiers and that are living off couches of their friends or living with their parents or, or that our first responders, our service members. And I say service members because technically, like I said, you know, uh, I'm not considered a veteran, even though I am. I feel myself as a veteran. As a classification, we say service members so that way we can help them. Um, and these guys and women, uh, men and women, actually are needing the assistance in the rural areas. And so what we, our goal is, our mission is to provide assistance with temporary housing and financial assistance, because those are the two main things that I really needed when I was uh, needing that assistance, when I was calling Military One Source, you know, because I was getting ready to lose my apartment and I, you know, was making my bills, I mean, my bills were piling up. I was getting ready to lose my car and I didn't want to lose my car. I'd rather lose the apartment than my car because in you know, my car, I can go places, go to job interviews, do my thing. You know, I can even sleep out of it if I needed to, but it's just, I didn't want to lose that. And I was trying to be smart about it. And so people, for, like I said, people forget about the rural areas in, in all in all. And they always want to go to the cities because they think, oh, homeless veterans are in the cities. No, they're actually homeless veterans that aren't technically homeless. They say they're homeless, but it's just a classification, just a title. Really, they don't have something of their own. They don't have something of ownership of their own. They may be living with a friend or living on a couch or something. And sooner or later, it could be temporary or their friend could get upset saying, hey, we, you need to get, get out. And he's like, I don't got no, he or she has saying, I don't got no place to go. Not my problem. You know, so we actually want to help them help these men and women with these with this temporary housing at least for three to six months. And we want to help them also with class, getting uh, the help that they need with finding a job or, you know, financial assistance in the realms of that. Or if they are basically working, we want to make sure that they are working enough to where they're saving up at least three months worth of paychecks. And so that way they can actually start restructuring their lives back on track. And that's what we want to focus on. We want to make sure that these people are actually restructuring their lives back on track to where they are making their bills on time, paying their bills on time, being good advocates you know, towards towards this organization and helping others as well. Basically giving back. It's the same method that they used you know, they did all the commercials back in the 90s when I was growing up saying, hey, you know, help your fellow man. And it's just that's what we're trying to support. And so we're built. Even though we do not have the land, we do not have the tiny homes because we want to do micro communities. We don't have a lot of that right now, but we have been building up partnerships. We are building up relationships with great organizations that can help us with those other services that we allocate out, such as mental health, such as um, 
uh, substance abuse or uh, again with suicide or alcoholism, um, we can allocate those services and we can also point them in the right direction towards helping them find a better job if they need help or if they need help with writing resumes, uh, anything like that. We try to get those get them those resources. We're actually building up a case manager, um, I would say, team on our um, for our organization. Our ED is the one that actually reached out to you. Her name's Andrea, and yep. she is awesome. Andrea Perez, uh, like I said, she came on here. Our previous ED, she was good. She was good. She was nice. Uh, she just, I just felt like she wasn't doing uh, the right stuff that Andrea was doing. And so we're very thankful to have Andrea reach out to you all and to other organizations that really just want to be involved and actually let us share, get the time to share our story, share my story. So just a uh, reason I'm kind of looking around here. I just wanted to read to people um, that you're not, you're not exaggerating here. This is from, you know, several military sources. National Guard members, this is the current law, are considered veterans if they serve 20 years or more or if they served 180 days or more in a federal status outside of training. This is due to a law passed in 2016 that gave them official veteran status to retired and guardsmen and women. National Guard and reserve members who are not called to active duty are not considered veterans under current law which is yep. completely the opposite for um, active duty. A yep. veteran is a person who served in active duty military, naval, or air service who was discharged or released under conditions other than dishonorable, which means for like the Marine Corps, you had a lot of guys who went to boot camp and got hurt during boot camp, got discharged after, between boot camp and their MOS school, but because... They went in as active duty and got their, you know, other than honorable discharge or honorable discharge, they're considered veterans. Mm -hmm. I, 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 now I'm going to go down this rabbit hole, Jeremiah, and see what the 2016 law was. Right, right. I mean, I mean it's just weird because I, I get what you're saying, because for National Guard and reservists, you are different. But here's yeah. the thing that people miss is you have to maintain a state of readiness physically, you know, mentally, technically, you know, you got to be good at your job in order to serve in your unit for the time that you're there. It just, it doesn't seem right because it's funny if you were in the army or any other service and had the same situation happen, you've been a veteran. You yeah. have your duty 214 and you have your active duty status. It, it, it had to be, it had to be a real blow to, you know, what you thought versus what you were told, man. Yeah. And so I actually, very early on, I had a, a great writing SNCO. He then retired. Uh, uh, but he, I, I told him I was considering uh, going active duty. And he said, you know what? <laughs> you don't want to do that. And I was like, why? He's like, do you want to really understand the difference? I was like, I said, okay, well, just explain it to me. He said, basically said to me, he's like, so everything that you're doing this drill weekend, no, right? I said, yes, that's hard. He said, you're doing that 24 seven nonstop until your contract is done. He said, everything you're doing on this drill weekend, or even the two weeks that you do, you're doing that 24 seven, but yet you still have to maintain your, um, like, um, your, Height and weight, make sure your readiness is up to date, make sure you're all good and everything. I said, well, dang, now that you think of it that way, but we could still go to the same schools. We can go to, you know, I wanted to go to aerosol. I wanted to be a sapper. Yeah, I really just wanted those too. Uh, I kind of like idolized my my drill sergeant. Uh, he, was, he was a good guy. He was yeah. a great mentor, a great teacher. And those are the two things that he had that I really wanted just to show him that and make him proud of me. Uh, kind of like because I I had a real bad you know experience growing up my life giver was not around and you know so it's just it, I was trying to find good people good men to actually Mentoring be good people yeah, yeah 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 and so uh, and then I wanted to make sure that I was always a good good man because I'm actually my wife and I are expecting our first child really so, well congratulations yes. Jeremiah Thank 
Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, that's the reason why my wife is actually stepping away, coming away soon. So we're making sure that our team is getting ready for that. She's going to still be with the team, but it's just she ste she's not doing a lot of the logistics and everything she does do. You know, you're having a boy or girl. Uh, I, I'm not saying that, saying it up. Oh, uh, no, you know, okay. But do you know, though? Yes, I do know. Yes, all right, so. all right, all right, all right. Well, I mean, I mean, I liked knowing myself because I got to bond with, the, with I got three sons, and it was like, oh, I got to, I, I, I mean, I started like, I, I, it wasn't just a baby. It was just like, that's, that's my son, mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. It's, and it's that's what I've been doing. I've been yeah. like putting my head down and talking to it. So it's just, it's, it's good. What an exciting I, time exactly and it's just that's why i said this week i was a little stressed out i had to refer back i, 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 I it's I guess, okay relapsed no yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's okay i mean i mean i got a cold and you know i'm like and then i got a little flu symptoms and i'm like it, it was not a good morning jeremiah yeah like, i know i was just saying like I, I was relapsing it's so sweet because i gotta let go i got left from my job oh no man yeah, but you're so... you're hired again yeah, I, I told you I got my truck driving license, so I'm I'm back to that. But it's just it's cake, it takes me away from doing this. This is what I really yeah. want to do, my full time job, and it's hard to do when we have no funding. But we're 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 working on that, and well, uh, but I'll can, get to that. How, how so. can people? How can people help you out? You know, with what um, you're doing. Well, what we're doing, I really want to help reach out to people, personnel, and everyone that can donate go to our website we have a donate button uh follow us on social media uh you know give our donations there uh we also have give butter account as well everything is connected to us on website go to warriorsfirstinc.org everything is there uh, for people to find us and research everything um but uh I mean, I, I lost track of where you were. Oh, yes. One other thing that I was going to say, back backtrack towards uh, my sergeant saying that you were emphasizing and going back into the difference between National Guard and Army. You know, this is the thing. Like I said, I still have my injuries, right? And I have my LODs that I was hurt on active duty. And then I also have an LOD for when I was hurt on drill weekend. Yep. I have that. And don't you know, I have to actually, for me as a National Guardsman or reservist, um, that I have to actually fight that with a lawyer in order for me to get benefits from the military to be classified as a veteran because I got hurt on military duty. That's the only thing. But yet, if you were active, it'll go straight through. And yeah, so I have to fight that. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, a lot of people don't understand. And then, you know, when I first started dipping my toe in the veterans advocacy, I'm like, you know, why are all these reservists and National Guard guys so uh you know jaded at the system and it's like well i got hurt on drill week and i got hurt overseas and then they told me hey we're not going to fix you go to your you know employee insurance and get fixed and the employee insurance is like well what do you mean the military won't it, be, it became a huge mess man and <laughs> and, and I, I would tell anybody who's active duty hey you, you know we can't we, we make fun of you all. I'm not going to lie. We make fun of you, National Fine. Guard. We do. And the reserves would show up in Yuma, and they're like, oh, you know, these barracks are unsat. We're like, really? This is the best we got. So, you know, all that aside is it, you have a different road than we do. We It's yeah. not the same at, at all. So I'm just glad that you've gone through all these challenges, Jeremiah. And this is really the the reason I want to talk to you on Oscar Mike radio is you've gone through all these challenges. You've almost taken a permanent solution to your, your, you know, very real problems, but now you're finding ways to give back. And, you know, with your child coming, you get to write a different story for that child, man. It's gotta be a, an exciting time for you. And hopefully you feel that like I do, that the work is all worth it. Oh yeah, I really do. Uh, I'm trying to at least, and I want to, make sure that I am helping in some kind of way because I want to make sure that I'm giving back. As I said, uh, another reason, and I will say this real quickly, uh, the reason why I want to help uh, first responders is because of my cousin. My cousin, I looked up to him growing up. He, I hope I, he watches this one day. I'll send him the link and hopefully he watches it. But uh, he did 
you know, time. He was a police officer actually before he actually got locked up, but he, he struggled with mental health and you can look it up, look up the whole ordeal. If you want to, anybody can, it's a, the individual was named Psycho Sam of Farmville, Virginia. He basically came over from California, you know, some kind of place out West, uh, met this fan, met this little girl online. So again, parents be careful with understanding who your kids are, you know, talking to this happened back in 2007 2008 something like that and uh he came over flew over murdered the whole family butchered them all and my cousin was actually one of the first officers on scene he wasn't the first through but he was one of the first officers on scene and when they found out where the individual was that and he was um, leaving they forced him to stay and to actually, while they were picking on the corner, was picking up the bodies and everything. And he described it to me as this satanic and everything. And he struggled with mental health. Even to this day, he struggles with mental health. And so it's, I want to make sure that we're helping those first responders as well, because they need that assistance. People forget about them too. And I want to make sure that they're, if they get, they need the assistance of just stepping away and going into a secluded area to help them restructure their minds, get away from the negativity of their family, of anything around them, and just to get them in a good spot. We want to make sure we're helping them in some kind of way, too. Because another thing for that is that statistically, it has been proven and you uh, that veterans that do finish their service, that don't have 20 years, that don't, you know, that come back from deployment, everything statistically has proven that they are more likely to get killed in a line of duty as a police officer than they are overseas. And that's crazy. And so we want to make sure that if the VA ain't helping them, and but they're classified as a first responder, or if they have their DD-214, we're, we're trying to break all barriers. We're trying to cover all our bases. So that way we can help them in some kind of way with some temporary housing, and financial assistance. So when I would say financial assistance, we're not no free bank. We're not going to say we're just going to give you a free check. We're actually going to go over your finances, find out what bill is really hurting you monthly. Say it's your mortgage, car payment, whatever. We will actually pay that bill for you. Once we start getting the funding, we don't have it now, so everybody don't start giving us a call. But uh, we will help pay directly towards that lender towards that bank, whatever, for you for that month, because that is our goal. So that way it'll give you some kind of leeway. And don't be, and you're going to have to follow the, if we do that, you would have to follow talking to our financial advisor, financial counselor, making sure that you're doing it. Uh, quick story on that one. There was the sergeant that actually took his life that I mentioned, he told me a story about one of his soldiers that was kept on spending all his um, money, his paycheck every week. Or every time he got paid, he was like, Sarge, I don't know what, what's going on. I'm always broke. He's like, what are you doing, Brian? What are you, why are you spending all this money? And so he's like, I'm going to fix this. We're going to figure this out. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to figure this out, and we're going to fix this. That's basically what he said. So what he found, after uh, he knew he got paid, everybody got paid on the same day, he followed him and came to, and talked to him the next day. He figured out what the problem was. He said, private such and such, I found out your problem. He's like, oh, you did, Sarge? Thank you. He's like, yeah. So every time you get paid, you go out to the <laughs> you go out to the strip clubs and you spend all your money <laughs> out of the strip clubs and that's what you're doing. So we're gonna set up a plan to get you out of debt and you're not gonna go there no more because I'm giving you an order and you're not because you got family and you gotta work on yourself. So we're gonna set up a financial plan for you to actually start working on yourself better. And that and that idea is where it came from. Be honest with you. So. Um, I want to make sure, in, in remembrance of that sergeant that took his life, uh, I, I, like I said, I'm not going to say any names, but uh, that was one of the best stories that I remember him saying, and it was fun. And one other thing as well, you keep on bringing up about the difference between National Guard and Reserves. This is, so, final story. We were getting ready to go deploy uh, my old unit, and granted, I was not looking forward to it, but I could still go with them. I could be in headquarters for it because of my injury and things. I couldn't do my actual combat engineer duties, but I could be attached to the headquarters portion of the unit so I could help with um, the mission. Well, they go down to Fort Polk because I'm attached to another unit. 
right now, but I'm still I'm I'm attached to another unit at Fort Pickett, but I'm still on the books with my old unit because of my contract. It's weird, but it does happen. Everybody <laughs> figure it out. I promise you it does happen. And so they went down to Fort Polk with the 10th Mountain because they were getting ready to deploy with them. National our team actually passed. We had passed our evaluation. The 10th Mountain failed. <laughs> so oh, yeah, boy. everybody talks stuff. We we passed our combat engineering unit. We passed. We were ready to go, but the 10th Mountain failed us, so we couldn't go. I can tell and you was, what they was, were getting. They were getting some pain and suffering for 24 seven for a while. <laughs> that's not. You just don't want that. You don't want that. <laughs> But well, that that's a good story that everybody thinks, you know, hey, we, we're on top of our stuff. We have to do this stuff. We've actually had active duty guys come into the National Guard, and they're like, man, y'all are on top of your stuff like that because we're just – we push. We push. We have to do everything in a short amount of time yeah. on the weekends, and so we have to get those things done. And so that's why we were always moving so quickly to um, complete our mission. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the website is warriorsfirstinc.org. I'll have it and the social media handles and the Oscar Mike radio show posts. You know, Jeremiah, I'm so glad uh, your organization reached out to me and we got to connect. Uh, I really resonate with the mission you all have, especially serving, you know, rural veterans and first responders. I think it's really something that's not seen a whole lot of. And your story should give hope to people who are in their abyss, man, in the valley, in the shadow of death, uh, a light out. And and I I just hope for all the best for you and your, your growing family. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. And again, I really appreciate this opportunity. And please have me back. I want to tell you more about what we plan on doing in the future with actual yes. transi transitioning yes. soldiers that are getting out of the military because we have a lot of ideas that we want to do with that too. Um getting out of um, that get basically getting out of active duty we want to help them as well so well when, um, when you guys have that. another chapter that you want to talk about just reach out we'll make this happen it's been really great talking with you and and all the best and this is just one of the great parts of doing oscar mike radio so you you've made my day man thank you very much well i appreciate it and again for everyone please check us out warriorsfirstinc.org and go follow us on social media all platforms um and donate please help us in some kind of way or you want to volunteer please let us know uh we have everyone all over the country even even uh in other other countries actually assisting us with remote jobs um please help us and help us grow well look folks uh again that's jeremiah williams army national guard i want to say veteran in my book and uh, thank you for, you know, serving our country and your state, the great state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, rather. And as we say in, here on Oscar Mike Radio, we are Mission in Flight. We will see you next time. Remember, Ana teaches that mission. We care about it. We do it every day. But I think there are things that just hit you and give you a reason to go on. The theme for our 2024 Marines Across America is live with purpose just seem to fit in with the bows of the wreath, the 10 attributes that we feel represent our United States military. I thought, what a great opportunity to put those two things together and show our kids through how we act, some of the things that can make their lives better, their communities better, and by doing that, the country better. For me, live with purpose, I think, is a, it's a mindset. Set some guidelines and then go out and purposefully Make life different. Make a change. It's an opportunity to set an example. Thank you for listening and watching Oscar Mike Radio, where our active duty service members and veterans are in action and the mission is in flight. Oscar Mike Radio is an oversized load, co Sinister One production. If you are a veteran or know a veteran who needs help, please dial 988 and press 1 for the Veterans Crisis Line.